So we talked about how you can take the square root of a square number, but what do we take what do we do when we want to take the square root of a number that's not a square number? Well, remember we need to simplify the radicals. So hopefully you guys remember what square numbers look like. And this is the easiest way I like to write um, I like to simplify radicals. I write down the square numbers all the way up to uh, what's in my uh, what's in my radicand. So uh, to simplify radicals, what you want to do is you want to factor your radicand by one of these square numbers. Because can we take the square root of all these numbers? Yes. So if I can get one of these numbers under my square root, I can find the value. So you're going to want to factor 45. So you guys can factor 45 many different ways, right? You guys can factor 45 by doing the factor tree. 15 times 3, um, then 5 times 3, and so forth, right? You can use the factor tree to factor it. However, you can also just rewrite it. Why don't I rewrite this as uh, negative 9 times 5? Is that fine? But the reason why I'm going to choose 9 times 5 is because 9 is a square number. All right. Now I'm going to do this one more time because I don't want a negative number there. So I'm going to rewrite it one more time as positive 9 times positive 5 times negative 1. So then when I go and break this up, I have square root of 9 times the square root of 5 times the square root of negative 1. Now. Do I know the square root of 9? Yes, that's why it was so important to factor this. Because 9 is 3. Square root of 5 is not a square number, so it remains under there. And then our definition of imaginary numbers, do we know the square root of negative 1? Is i. Done, son.